Will do. All right, so welcome everybody then to our live Q&A. Um, the three classes that we'll be offering that are open for the application period that's open from now until November 27th is our Intro to Programming class. That's a 16 week class that'll run from January 26th to May 17th, 2022. It covers basic JavaScript, CSS, HTML, Git um, and GitHub usage, and then API fetch for being able to pull data from servers and use it in your site. And then we offer two advanced classes, one for front end, which is going to be in React, and then one for back end, which is Ruby and Rails. Um, both of the advanced classes run at the same time, so you do have to choose either one or the other. You can't take them both simultaneously since they run uh, concurrently with each other. Uh, they're 25 weeks total. The first 17 weeks is individual work portion, and then the final eight weeks is a group practicum where you'll be put into small groups to work together in a team setting so you can get familiar with how to work as a part of a team. Um, so the entire class and the practicum portion for those advanced classes run from March 2nd to August 26, 2022. The eight-week practicum portion will be from July 5th to August 26th, just to kind of give you an idea of timeline for that. Uh, the React class covers everything from fundamentals all the way through deployment. And then our Ruby on Rails class covers um, SQL, Ruby, Bootstrap, and Rails. Um, our general class requirements uh, for the intro is just uh, recommended exposure to some general programming concepts or being comfortable with like just computer basics, you know, how to open files, um, how files are structured as far as like you go to your hard drive and then you go into a subfolder and then into a subfolder, those kinds of things. Um, so just basic computing skills are sufficient for the intro level class. Um, and you don't have to have any exposure to actual coding. That being said, it is a career track program. Um, so it's going to be more in depth and it's going to be more challenging than for somebody who wants to just take a class to be like, what is coding all about? So if you're if you're already knowledgeable about what coding is about and you're wanting to dive in and get started on that career path change, then this would be a more appropriate class for you. If you're just wanting to kind of see what it's all about, um, then I would recommend doing some online tutorials first to be able to see um, what's out there and what coding is all about before you uh, really want to dive into our intro level class. Our advanced classes, um, previous experience is preferred, um, and it doesn't have to be terribly advanced, and you don't have to have experience in React or Ruby or Rails for those advanced classes. But if you're familiar with like HTML, CSS, JavaScript, um, basics along those lines, uh, if you're familiar with API fetch, and if you've used GitHub at all, then you'll be comfortable in the advanced classes. Um, computers, uh, for what's required for the classes, your, for your intro class, you can get by with pretty minimal, pretty basic. Um, for the advanced classes, there are a little bit more particular specifications that you'll want for the machine types and for what kind of um, hardware they have. Uh, we do have that information available on that codethedream.org slash classes site in the frequently asked questions section. So feel free to check that out for further details based on the class that you're interested in. Uh, everybody should have a uh, computer um, and reliable internet. Everybody should have commitment to the class because it is a pretty uh, large time commitment. It'll be about 15 to 20 hours a week of work, regardless of which level class you're entering into. Um, the classes are part time, so it's not like you need a solid block from 9 a.m. to noon or anything like that. Um, but uh, it's work at your own schedule, but it is 15 to 20 hours of work of work a week <laughs> over the course of a week spread out toward per whatever is best for your schedule. Uh, so that gives sort of the basic rundown on the classes. Next steps that I want to cover as far as uh, once you've applied for the classes, what happens then? So applications close on the 27th. And then on Monday, the 29th is when we'll send out an email to anybody that has applied uh, with the pre-work assignment. And the pre-work assignment is going to be different whether you're applying for intro or if you're applying for advanced. For those of you applying for any and all classes or a combination of intro and advanced, then we'll be sending out information for both the intro and the advanced pre-work. So that way you can take a look and determine which one you want to attempt or which one you want to do. The pre-work should take you about 15 to 20 hours to complete roughly, and you're given two weeks to complete it. So you receive it on November 29th, and the deadline for it is going to be December 12th. Um, we do have some guides and things in the pre-work to be able to kind of help you work through if there are some areas that you're unfamiliar with and you need resources to turn to to kind of investigate and do a little digging before you actually write your code um, or before you kind of build, build your structure for what the assignment is. 
um, but that just kind of gives you an idea. The amount of time that you're going to be spending on the pre-work is to give you a preview of that's how much work you're going to put in for each week of class. So as you're working through the pre-work, think to yourself, is this something that I can handle in a week's time? If so, then you should be good to go. If it seems like it's way more than what you can handle, um, then you might want to kind of work on some tutorials and we can direct you to those beforehand, um, before joining us for either the intro or the advanced classes. There are different pre-work assignments for intro applicants versus advanced. Uh, intro is it's gonna be a JavaScript tutorial. It's a fun little mini project and we provide you with a tutorial so you don't have to know JavaScript starting out. It kind of teaches you how to build it along the way. Um, and it's just for us to get an idea of how well you're grasping the general concept of how JavaScript works to be able to create something in a page. Um, you submit your code sample. You don't need to use GitHub. You don't need to create a GitHub account, anything like that for the intro project. For the advanced projects, those are mini projects that demonstrate your understanding of API fetch, so getting and parsing data from an open source database and your familiarity with using GitHub. Um, if you already have some coding experience, but you don't know those things, um, then you should either go into our intro class or kind of bone up on those things and learn how those work uh, before you apply uh, directly into our advanced classes. And as I mentioned, we do offer resource links in the pre-work instructions that uh, can help you educate yourself on particular topics that maybe you're comfortable with HTML and JavaScript already, but you need a little help with CSS, or um, you're already comfortable with JavaScript, HTML, and CSS, but you forgot how to do an API fetch, or you haven't experienced that yet, then we've got resources there to direct you to. Um, if you're not sure which pre-work to do uh, and you've applied for intro and advanced, then go ahead and start working on the advanced, at least read through the instructions. If it seems like it's more than you can handle, then do the intro and submit that. Um, if you have coding experience, then I would say try the advanced first. Um, if you notice that it's more a bigger challenge than what you think you can accomplish in the two week time frame, then you can always pivot and do the intro uh, work and submit that instead. Uh, if you have no or minimal coding experience, then definitely do the intro first. Don't even bother looking at the advanced stuff. You can just dive right into intro. And again, as a reminder, the deadline for the pre-work is going to be December 12th. Uh, so after you've submitted your pre-work on December 12th, we take several weeks to review everyone's code. I think we had like over 150 applicants at least, and I'm sure there are still going to be more rolling in between now and the 27th. So it takes a lot of time for us to be able to review all of that code. Um, and so it'll be a little while between when you've submitted your pre-work and when you hear back about whether or not you've gotten into the class. So please be patient and bear with us. Um, for the advanced classes, we might contact you after you've submitted your pre-work and before you've heard about whether or not you're into the class um, to set up an interview with you. If you're asked for an interview, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're getting in. Uh, if you aren't asked for an interview, it doesn't necessarily mean that you've been rejected. Um, so the interview is really just for us to be able to get a better idea of if there are going to be any hurdles in your way that are going to keep you from being able to be successful in the class um, and to get an idea of how comfortable you were with the pre-work. So don't take it one way or another if you're not or if you are called for an interview. It's just helping us parse out um, uh, any questions that we have based on the application information and the pre-work you sent. Uh, everybody will hear back one way or the other, whether or not they've been accepted or not into the classes. For the intro applicants, you will hear by January 11th. For the advanced applicants, you'll hear by February 15th. Um, so if it's January 11th and there's nothing in your inbox, there's nothing in your spam folder and you haven't heard anything, then please contact us. For the advanced classes, February 15th, same thing, contact us and let us know. Um, student orientation. So we do hold a student orientation so that way you're familiar with where all the resources are and how to get about your class on the Tuesday before your class starts. So intro students, that student orientation will be held on January 18th. And then advanced students, that orientation will be held on February 22nd. Um, so once class starts, if you've been accepted, then uh, the class is pretty intensive as far as the amount of work that goes into each week. You'll attend two or more hour-long mentor sessions a week, and they're held in Zoom on a live um, conversation like what we're doing right now with an experienced developer that can help you with any questions you have about the assignment, um, help you walk through any problems that you're running into, that kind of a thing, and just answer any questions that you have about the lesson material for the week. Um, you'll have a few hours of either video instruction or um, learning materials to read. And then you'll do a coding assignment as well. Uh, in addition to the coding curriculum, you'll also have a portion that's called mindset curriculum. Um, and that's a, 
an assignment that we provide you with each week that are supplemental activities, and it's just to help prepare you to make the career change. So topics are on things like um, how to uh, face troubleshooting issues, you know, when you're coding and you run into problems, how do you go about problem solving? Um, what are the steps that you do when you need to ask for someone's help? Um, what are, you know, beneficial ways that you can collaborate that will help you learn more? So it's all sort of supportive structures that go into the class. Um, you'll need to allow about 15 to 20 hours um, a week for classes. So taking one of our classes is very much like having a part-time job and you'll need solid blocks of quiet time to be able to focus on the learning materials as well as focus on the um, lessons that you're doing. So just keep that in mind when you're trying to decide if this boot camp course that we're offering is good for you. Look at your whole schedule start to finish. So from the start date of the class all the way to the end. So it'll be, you know, January to what did I say, May or um, or to August for the advanced classes. So just keep that in mind. Um, because they are four to six month commitments, depending on which class you're accepted and going into. Uh, other questions that we get often are how many people get in. It is a competitive program. Each class uh, will have about 30 students total that we accept. Uh, so 90 students overall across those three classes. Um, so just consider if you're ready for the time commitment or not, because if you accept a seat, you might be taking and but you aren't ready for the time commitment, um, then you might be taking a seat away from somebody that uh, does have the time that they'd be able to commit to the class. Um, once you've completed the class, intro students can then either take our uh, new class that we'll be offering in June on Node.js, um, or they can take the React class. So that'll be the options once you complete the intro class. For students that go into the advanced classes, you can either start job hunting at an entry level or junior developer position. Um, you can take another advanced class if you wanted to learn back end, if you already took front end or vice versa, or you can apply for our apprenticeship. It's a very small percentage of people that will be offered the apprenticeship because it's dependent on um, what availability we have in our dev shop as far as what space and what projects we can put you on. Um, of class graduates, we always take a look at your final projects, your class participation throughout the class, your comfort level with the material when we're determining who's going to be um, the best uh, suited for the apprenticeship position. Um, so qualities that we look for in all students are commitment, dedication, drive to be a developer, um, some experience is a benefit, but for the intro level, it's not required. Um, it's for all of our classes, it's not just classes to be able to try it out and see if you like it. It is a competitive program structured with the intention of getting you job ready within a year or two um, or less if you're coming in at the advanced class level. Um, so we're really focused on students who are ready to take this step for their career. Um, additionally, uh, most boot camps are charging tuitions in the thousands of dollars range, uh, but we're able to offer these classes for free through grants and through wonderful donations from a lot of people who believe in the work that we're doing as far as our goal to be able to diversify tech and um, get people from low income backgrounds uh, into better positions that they can better support their family and their community. Um, so rather than having any kind of a tuition, we have what's called a pay it forward pledge. And so we just ask that um, since you've been able to benefit from completely free classes to please uh, keep in mind after you've completed the classes to be able to pay it forward in some way, um, whether that means coming back as a mentor or a volunteer with our group. If you've landed that amazing dev job that's well paying, then um, kick a few bucks back to us to be able to continue um, our role of offering free classes to those who need it. Um, anything along those lines as far as paying it forward to be able to help really support others that can then follow in your footsteps. Well, I, that was a lot of information all at once. <laughs> um, so we'll go ahead and stop with the information overload portion and we'll go ahead and open it up for questions. Um, I need to excuse myself from the call, but Lori, Avel, and Javier, you all are uh, wonderful leaders to be able to take over any questions from our folks here. And it was a pleasure seeing your all faces and I hope to see you in our classes soon. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, Mary Alice. Good luck. I know you've Hold got on, a lot Lord, you're still on there. there you go. <laughs> okay. Yes. Thanks. Um, yes. Uh, thank you so much, Mary Alice. Um, let's see. I am going to um, give me one second. Let me get set up here. I'm going to spotlight myself and um, Javier. And let me find Avel. Um, let me see here. 
Okay, there we go. Um, yes, uh, yes, excellent question in the chat about what time the live instructor, the live session with the instructor is. So the way that it works is that um, we actually have, um, a, we'll have probably about 10 to 12 um, mentors who will lead small group sessions throughout the week. The mentors will choose session times that are times that are convenient to them. But it is usually it's, you know, usually you'll basically have 10 to 12 different options throughout the week to choose from. Um, so uh, it usually most people can find one that lines at least one or two that lines up with their schedules. Um, so usually we don't have too much of a, a problem uh, with that. Almost always someone can find times to work. If you cannot, you can also make a note um, uh, in Slack, which is how we do all of our class communications. And you can mention, oh, I, you know, none of these times work for me. Does anybody have a time at, you know, is anyone available at 9 a.m. Pacific time? And we can see if we can make that work. Um, let's see, um, Javier or Abel, do you, or Javier, did you want to speak to something about the uh, schedule of the mentor sessions? Yeah, I found that there were a lot of, there was a lot of availability and a lot of mentors. And, you know, from Saturdays through during the week, um, it was pretty easy. And, you know, you could join one or two or, you know, the space is available, all of them, but usually there's a lot of space and, and they're really helpful because you can um, ask questions about uh, the assignment, you know, and, uh, you know, get all your questions answered. And actually, I'm thinking before we go into more questions, Javier and Abel, if you could take just a couple minutes each to maybe introduce yourselves, talk about the um, classes that you took and um, what you're doing now, that'd be great. Yeah, Javier, do you want to go ahead since you're already speaking? Okay. So hello, everybody. My name is Javier Jimenez. I'm in Los Angeles, California. And uh, I heard about Code the Dream while I was in San Francisco trying to get a job, but it was kind of hard. And I had to kind of reinvent myself and pick up a new skill. And uh, I was in the Tenderloin District in San Francisco, and I heard about them and took some JavaScript. And uh, I liked it a lot. I learned a lot. And then that's where I found out about Code the Dream. And I applied and I was like, yes, I got in. So I took the Ruby on Rails course uh, this past year. It was pretty hard, but um, it was a good challenge. And uh, you know, if you just put in the hard work, um, it pays off. And I was really uh, proud of myself that I got a website you know, simple, but pretty, pretty cool website going. And uh, I always wondered how they worked and, you know, how the back end was involved as far as how uh, websites work. And, and I got to learn that. And, uh, and then I was uh, blessed enough to get into the apprenticeship. And that's what I'm doing now. I'm working uh, on a project called ACT. And uh, <clears throat> basically, they just, uh, they get a uh, clinical trials information and it's a big website that helps a lot of uh, scholars and uh, doctors and different people that wanna get this information. And uh, so that's what I'm doing now. I'm working on uh, that project and, and it's challenging, but I'm, I'm still learning. So that doesn't stop. You know, the learning doesn't stop. So that's about that's great. it. Thank you, Javier. Perfect. Um, Abel, do you want to introduce yourself and share a little bit of your experience? You are still muted. Oh, we still can't hear you. Oh, let me see. Sorry about that. Here we go. Oh, thank you. Can you hear me now? Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, my name is Abel Gechure. I'm actually pretty happy to see there's somebody else from Kenya here. Zachary, yeah, I'm from. I'm originally from Kenya, and uh, but I currently reside in New Jersey, and the United States here. And yeah, I you know I, I got the chance to. I was pretty. I was lucky, lucky as Javier to be able to like join Code the Dream as an intern. You know, I came. I came in with uh, a little bit of uh, programming experience for my previous. Uh, you know. Uh, background and 
it was a uh, you know pretty refreshing moment for me to be able to be accepted at uh, Code the Dream when I was looking for something to keep me going and uh, something that will help me realize my dream of becoming a software engineer. And so you know Code the Dream took me in and you know it was uh, a great journey for me because I I had the chance to learn JavaScript. I had a chance to also learn, you know, React framework, and I also had the chance to work with the most, uh, you know, to work with very amazing mentors, to work with the, you know, called the Dream community, and it was, you know, it's it's one of uh, the best experiences in my life, and you know, I've I've learned a lot in this program, and you know, I've worked on projects that, uh, you know, really challenged me, really helped me grow as a person, really. You know, help me grow. You know, my skills in terms of programming, and so, you know, you you all who are trying to get into this program, I just want to say that, uh, you know, this is one of the best decisions you'll ever make in your life. And you know, working with uh, you know, because the dream offers you a uh, a space whereby you can be yourself, you can be creative, you can feel empowered to you know, to learn and to grow and to become a leader, you know, to become a leader. So it's just, it's just not a place where you'll come and learn how to code, but you learn a lot of things on the way. So, you know, uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure that I was part of, you know, I was part of Code the Dream. And just today, you know, I had a good news today where I had to like, you know, I'm, I'm sorry I'll be leaving Code the Dream as an apprentice, but I'm, you know, I'm lucky that I got a full-time job today. I'll be working at Fubo TV as a software engineer, and I'm just a test, a testament of what would happen to you guys, because you'll be like, you know, you'll be set for success, and yeah, you'll you, you'll do great. And so I'm happy to be here and help inspire you guys to know that this is the best decision you'll make in your life. Wow, One that of the was best. That yeah. <laughs> Sounds fantastic, Abel. Thank you. And congratulations. This is yeah. the first time I'm hearing the news. So thank you, really thank great. You. I yep. haven't been um yeah, checking my my Slack today. So fantastic. There, mm -hmm. there you go, yep. right there. <laughs> yep. Um um, I do want to share just a, a little bit more about the apprenticeship, which Javier and Abel are both part of the Code the Dream apprenticeship program. And that is um, an option to apply for after you complete um, the advanced classes. Um, so after that, after you complete the advanced classes and the practicum, um, then you will have the opportunity to apply for a, uh, a, a paid apprenticeship position with Code the Dream Labs if you are interested in that. Many people are also um, going straight into uh, engineering jobs after afterwards, but many people also um, really want to stay and gain the extra experience um, working in Code the Dream Labs. Um, and so, but that it's not a given, it is also a competitive program. So um, again, the classes are the first step and, and each of the each of the um, things is just one, you know, one step after another. Um, um, so anyway, we'll, we'll start getting into more questions now. I think um, I can um, I can allow people to unmute now, but maybe what you can do just to, because we do have say 25 people on, you can uh, maybe raise your hand using the, um, if you go in Zoom on the bottom of your screen where it says reactions, there's an option to raise hand. Um, and if you do that, then we'll know, you know, who um, who wants to speak. Um, and you're also, of course, welcome to ask questions uh, in the chat. Um, so let's see. Um, yes, we have a question. Let me get to this one question here in the chat first, and then I'll go to Kenny. Um, so Paul asks, will there be an evaluation system in the class like grades? N the answer to that is no, we do not do grades. Um, we do offer, you will get feedback on your code, um, but we do not do grades because <laughs> It's really about a philosophy of learning. Um, and it's really about uh, our students taking charge of their own learning. So you're not, some, some students come to us and have a strong academic background and they're used to always like 
working for that grade, working for that, you know, trying to get the grade. Um, and it's really not about that. It's about trying to understand the concepts. And the more that you work on it, the deeper that you go, the more you'll understand those concepts. And really, we're trying to prepare you for the job. So it's not about, oh, so-and-so got, you know, straight A's or, you know, got the best marks. It's really about how are you committing to the program and how are you committing to your own understanding of the code and your learning process. And it's through that um, that, you know, we will see, you know, you will have the, the results in your work if, you're, if your code um, if your code works. So you will be getting feedback like, oh, maybe you could have done this differently. Um, uh, well, after the first five weeks of the intro program, that during the first five weeks, you're working within a coding environment that uh, will just give you automatically, yes, you did it right or no. After that time, when you begin submitting through GitHub and when you learn the process of GitHub, then you, there'll be an assignment reviewer that looks over your work every week and gives you feedback on, oh, you might have done this differently, um, but you do not get specific grades. Um, uh, Kenny, do you want to unmute yourself and ask the question? Yeah, hi, can you hear me? Yes, great. Okay, cool. Um, I just had uh, a oh, quick... oh, hold on. I'm sorry. Let me change this because probably folks can only still see me. So I am going to, let's see, I'm going to remove spotlights and okay, let's see. Hopefully everyone can see you now, Kenny. Is that better? Oh, okay. Wow. <laughs> um, so I came a little late to the orientation, but where would I find the pre-work to kind of get started on? Um, yeah, I know I know nothing about coding. Uh, I'm going into this like very um, unknowledgeable. So I'm just like wondering, do you think it's like possible for someone who doesn't have any experience to get that pre-work done in time, like December 12th, I think you said? Yeah, um, yeah, that, that's a great question. So um, uh, yes, absolutely. Um, we do have people who, who come in new all the time. Um, you will get the pre-work, it will be emailed to you the day after applications close. So we've just extended our application deadline to um, Saturday, the 27th. So uh, two days after Thanksgiving. Um, and so I guess actually it'll be Monday that you'll get the, the pre-work emailed to you. Um, so turn it in by Saturday. I think um, Mary Alice will be reviewing a few things on, on Sunday. And then on Monday, we will send out the pre-work and you will have two weeks to complete it. So for okay. you, Kenny, you would be looking for the um, introductory class. And mm -hmm. the, um, the intro class, as part of the pre-work, it actually includes a significant tutorial in JavaScript. It's through the Khan Academy. Oh it's actually a lot of fun. So you will get to learn some things as you go along. And um, based on that tutorial, at the end, you're then asked to do a little code sample of your own. Now, that's the most, there's a lot of other questions too, um, which are all important, of course, but that code sample is the most important. So it's really, it's, it's to show what you've learned through that tutorial. So that will be for you the biggest determinant. Okay. Also, one more uh, quick question um, about like getting accepted for the application. Like, is there any way I can like improve my chances of getting like accepted or... Like, is there anything I can do beforehand? Yeah, get, I would just go start looking up um, coding tutorials, JavaScript tutorials um, online. There's lots of them out there and definitely you can do that. Um, we are definitely looking for people who have the drive, who have already started looking into it. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, go for it. And I will say, if you even if you don't get in this time, we love it when people reapply. Um, that will help if, if we have a lot of applicants already. There will be many more by next week. It is a very competitive program. Um, not everyone will get in. However, we love it when people reapply. That's it's great. It's usually only a matter of we just don't have capacity. Um, and that's why um, some people don't get in. It's not because maybe you don't have the drive or not even maybe it's not that you don't have the skills. It's that we simply don't have the capacity. So mm -hmm. that means next time you're much more likely to get in if you've already applied once. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right, other questions? Um, go ahead, Asane. 
Or you can tell me the right way to pronounce your name. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, Asan. Asan, sorry. No problem. Um, how you doing? Um, Good. Um, so I'm, I'm also um, extremely uh, fresh to uh, coding. Um, I would just like to know, generally speaking, um, how closely related with um, the skills the program would offer us to kind of branch off. I know you guys seem to stress a lot of like software engineering and developing, but um, how closely related is this to uh, cybersecurity? Yeah, that, that's a good question. Um, I think that a lot of um, people are interested in going into cybersecurity who start, you know, just with the um, web development first. So I think this would be a great place to start. Uh, I will go ahead and share with you, I'm not a developer myself. Um, I work on the admin and program side. Um, so I don't know if um, Javier or Abel want to speak more to that, but we, we actually have one, one of our, um, volunteers has done a lot in the security world and um yeah i mean he's a very senior um software engineer and architect so i think this was a this was a path um that he took so abel do you want to speak to that yeah, yeah that's a really great question because you know i i also have an experience in cyber security because i you know i got to do some certification with cisco if you know cisco I got the chance to do one of their certifications in cybersecurity called Cisco CCNA CyberOps. And you know what I learned during that process is that programming will most often overlap with you know, whatever you're doing in the IT space and you learning how to code will actually be a really you know, critical, helpful arts asset for you to be able to like pivot to other areas in IT. So yeah, learning how to code is, I would say, is fundamental for you to be successful in any career you're going to choose. You know, you're going to learn how to be able to think. You're go, even if you're going to be working in cyber security, you, you know, you you will need to. You know, nowadays networks are automated, and what uh, the things that automate the networks are like scripts that you write with Python. You know, that you write with some other coding languages, and so learning how to code will be very valuable for you. And along the way, you can end up, you know, learning cybersecurity and you'll be a much more better, you know, professional. Thank you. Yep. Yep. Thanks, Abel. Thanks, Hassan, for your question. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, Boyd, um, do you have a question? Yes. Um, can you hear me okay? Yes. Yes. Um, I'm currently participating in. Uh, Jewish Vocational Services uh, IT Futures Program, which uh, is training for uh, IT tech, uh, an IT tech support job, and uh, runs, I believe, until March. Although part of that, it, it, it follows the Google Google's uh, IT support Coursera program. Um, it seems to have similar time requirement structure to your structure. And I, since your program starts in late January, there would be a decent amount of overlap. And I'm wondering if it'd be possible to do them both or would it be too much? Um, I think it's possible. It depends. Our, um, so you you have that program that's a 10 to 20 hour a week um, commitment. Do you have other things on top of that? Um, Not currently. It's part of why I want to do them both so I can limit the amount of time that I'm spending unemployed. Yes, things. I think I think that if you do not have another job, you probably could do them at the same time. Um, and I think that's probably OK to do at the same time. We do not recommend that people study two different coding languages at the same time no, in our yeah. program. Yeah, we we do not recommend that at all. Um, in fact, we ask even our interns to wait um, until they get to a certain level in their current language before they even take another one of our classes. Um, but mm -hmm. I think with that program, I think you'd probably be okay if you were, especially if you were doing the intro class. There's still, there's quite a bit of work, but um, yeah, you could, it just depends on how you manage your time. I've, I've been, I'm coming to, I came to this program from completing uh, Code Tenderloin's HTML and JavaScript programs. Um, awesome. But I'm not, I don't feel I'm comfortable enough with arrays to try to go for the Ruby program or the other one, especially since I'd be overlapping. Actually, it might not overlap with JVS, but it'd be like right after. So I figured intro would be better. 
That sounds perfect. Yeah, especially if you already have a little background, I think you would be okay. I mean, the, the beginning of the intro class is, is pretty heavy on the JavaScript and there's actually quite a few, um, quite an intensive video um, portion at the beginning there. Um, but I think that if, if, if you have, you know, especially a little bit of knowledge already, I think that you'd be okay. All right, and my other, my, for that, sorry, sorry, I don't mean to Bogart, uh, for, I know we, we will have a part-time, a 20 hour a week internship for two months. Um, where the, the mentor, the mentor part of this, or how flexible is that scheduling? So I know the rest is, it seemed that like the rest was self-paced. Yes, yes. And, and just to clarify, so the, the um, two month, um, that's not, that's what we call the practicum. The internship is a whole separate thing. No, that you I'm talking do. about uh, JVS. Oh, gotcha. Okay, got it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, yes. Okay. The mentor sessions that you are taking um, with with Code the Dream are very flexible. Um, there are typically ten to twelve different time slots offered during a week, um, so you will have your choice of which ones you can choose. Sometimes, like Javier was saying, even on the weekends or um, other other you know, evenings, weekends, sometimes, you know, we usually have at least a few that are West Coast friendly for the evenings. Um, it, it all varies, um, but because we, it depends on the schedule of the volunteers, but, uh, um, but yeah, usually people can make it work. All right, thank you. I do apologize. I came in this late. I had a meeting with uh, someone in the IT Futures program that went a little farther. So I yeah. came in late, so I may have missed some stuff. My apologies. No problem. I think that's no my hand down. Great. Thanks, Boyd. Thank you. Um, I see that Kenny has another question. What class is taught and what language is taught in the intro class? Um, in the intro class, we focus on um, JavaScript, um, HTML, CSS, um, just learning how JavaScript works in the DOM. Um, and then by the end, you get a little bit more into um, fetch API and how to how to do those API calls. Um, okay, there's a question that's come in from Mohammed. How much, uh, what's the chance of moving from intro to advanced class? Because I think for an entry level job, intro class might not be enough to secure a job. Um, it depends. Um, the, we have had some people move up from um, intro class to uh, advanced in the middle of the term. Um, but if you take the introductory class, you are basically, if you complete the, your final project, you are basically guaranteed a slot in the advanced classes. Those are, you will have preference. So you will definitely move right into, assu assuming you complete all of the work and your project, um, you will move right into the advanced class. Um, but in terms of if you're talking about jumping from the middle of an intro class into the advanced class, uh, that will just depend on your skill level. And if, you know, you started out an intro and just decided, you know, or it turns out that was really too, too easy for you, then that there is a chance of that, but it's um, a little bit rare. Um, I hope that answered your question. Yes, thank you so much. Okay. Oh, great. Thanks, Mohammed. <laughs> Um, are there any other questions? Yes, I have a question. Um, I already put in my application, but I believe that I marked only intro because while I do have, you know, some experience with coding with, uh, not necessarily with JavaScript, but with HTML and CSS, but none would get and uh, things like that. I didn't really know because I'm really actually more interested in the Ruby and Rails than the intro because I would like to do backend. Um, but is there still a way that I can take a look at the pre-work for the advanced class, even though what I put on my application was the, um, the intro? Yes, yeah, that's, a, that's an excellent question, Tia. I will go ahead and just mark you that you are also interested in Ruby on Rails. Um, just make a note of that. But my name is a little bit different. I'm here on a different gotcha. email address. So my name is actually, I'm, I'm 
can I like email you yeah, my name? Yeah, just yeah, email Lori at codethedream.org or you can message me in the chat right now. Um, Got it. Um, in fact, if you want, you can email both me and Mary Alice. Uh, and uh, we will make sure that we that you get that. Okay. And there will be a chance if, to, if when you're working on the advanced pre-work, um, if it is too much or whatever, you can go back and try the, the intro. Um, so yeah, that, that will be an option. Okay, yeah. thank you. Um, okay, uh, one more question here from Paul. Um, uh, your cousin will give you a computer. Will an iMac be sufficient for the intro class? I think that should be just fine. I think almost any recent Mac um, will, will be okay. Um, in there, you can look, I believe, in the uh, frequently asked questions on the um, classes page, codethedream.org slash classes. I think there is a question about the machines and, um, and uh, you can get the, a more specific answer there. Um, um, and but I will tell you, it depends on Paul. I'm not sure which class you are, want to apply for, but the main um, it's Ruby on Rails is the class that requires the most uh, uh, specifications for your machine. Um, if you're just doing intro, you're going to be fine with almost anything. Um, even React, if you have any Mac, is probably okay. Yeah. Um, well, before we close up, I'm just wondering if Javier and Abel want to share just um, any advice you have for new students. Um, Javier, what would you say, or what, what would you say to your former self when you were applying or when you were um, wanting to, when you were just starting out? It's a good question. What would I say? Uh, I did not prepare you well. I did not yeah. tell you I was going to ask you this. So this is on the fly. That's fine. Um, well, when I took the class, I, I was also working full time, 40 hours. So that was kind of, it was kind of tough, but um, I pretty much found time on the weekends and, and in the evenings. So definitely the, the various hours that the mentors, you know, had available helped me out. And I would just suggest to yeah, look at some tutorials and, you know, learn some of it or brushing up if you have to, but just, uh, and then ask questions, you know, like if you have questions, ask, ask somebody and just, uh, that's about it, you know, just put in the work. That's great. Thanks, Javier. Yeah, we hear over and over again. It's just that time commitment. It's really important. It's a, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of time. Um, Abel, what about you? What's your advice? Yeah, thank you. That's a great question. Yeah, I think uh, I would say, you know, learning to code is a process and uh, you just have to, you know, remember if, if you've ever looked at a kid or a child when they were born, you know, they didn't know much. They were so small and, you know, they kept growing and you know, now they could hold up their head and now they can walk and now they can use a spoon to feed themselves. And during that process, there's a lot of frustration when you look at them, you know, they are trying to walk, they fall down, they get back up, they fall down again. Learning to code is, you know, it's a frustrating process, right? Because you're, you're, you're teaching your mind to think differently, but it's very rewarding in the end. And all you have to remember, because this is what I, want, I would have told myself when I was starting how, uh, and learn, when I was starting to learn how to code, is that you know be patient with yourself and look at it as a process. Look at it like a marathon, okay? Because even in engineers who are like 15 years in the in the in the game, 20 years, they're always learning the most basic of basic of things. And so, if you know that, you will be kind to yourself. And it will actually free some space in your mind to actually explore coding even in a more authentic place and to know that this is a process that will take time, but you will also be rewarded if you put in the time. Okay, so 
don't be hard on yourself because there will be times you'll be you'll be frustrated you'll be like oh this is hard it's just like learning any anything new like when you learned how to ride a bike you kept falling but one day it just clicked and you know you kept going but that's that's how I would describe how you know that's how I describe what learning to code really means so just be patient with yourself put in the work make sure you know you're managing your time really well never stop coding every single day revisit the same things you did keep learning and keep going don't ever say that oh i'll have time in the weekend and try and cram everything in like 10 hours time it will not do you good you'd rather even do you know i'm not you know i'm not suggesting this to you because i know that the program has its own timeline just be smart with how you manage your time but never miss to like revisit things you've done never miss to like learn something new even if it's one thing during the day because it will just make your brain more elastic and everything will connect and you will be you know you your brain will have to, to hold everything together very easily but if you're like oh you can't find any time at all then it will be really hard to like your for your brain to piece up everything and make sense out of it so be kind to yourself know it's a process and know it's a process that you will do well in if you just you know keep being incremental in the way you're learning every single day just put in the work and be kind to yourself and you'll be fine wow that is awesome advice abel we're uh i'm gonna be asking you to come talk to a uh, new <laughs> student orientation as <laughs> Yeah, I wish, really... I, I wish I had the same, you know, I will, I will talk to as many people uh, as I can because, you know, as you're starting out, I remember starting out, I, you know, I was just doing things on my own and, you know, instead of making a lot of progress, I was, you know, actually making progress and then, you know, hurting myself going back. But this is why I did what, you know, this is why I'm in programming. This community is very helpful. You know, there's a lot of inf information out there in the internet, and it's because the community in itself is a giving back community. And so even you guys, I know your future programmers, you'll do great in this space, but never forget where you came from. Never forget how you felt when you started and always go back and help and help somebody, you know. So that's why I'm really passionate about this. Mm, beautiful words of wisdom. Thank you. And Abel, I think... We want to send you all our congratulations because because uh, Abel is now our newest Code the Dream uh, uh, graduate with a with a job. So yeah. that's fantastic, <laughs> great news. All right, well, I will stay on several more minutes if anyone has any additional questions. But I think this mostly concludes our session this evening. Um, thank you so much. Remember that deadline is on Saturday. Please get your applications in codethedream.org slash, I'll put it in here, apply dash now, which you can always access through codethedream.org slash classes. Um, and we will be sending out that pre-work one week from today um, to everyone who has applied. So yeah, that's it. I look forward to seeing all of your applications. This is a beautiful group. This is really great. This is exactly what we want the future of tech to look like. So please, uh, like Abel said, just, just keep it going every day. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you all soon. Thank you guys, appreciate it. Janine, I'll, I'll be here. Uh, some people may get off it, but um, yes, go go ahead, Janine. Okay, yeah, thank you. I'm pretty sure I already applied. Should I email you just to make sure I did? Let, let me check right now. You you probably did and that's, that's fine. Um, I'll just double check. Yeah, we, we just extended the application deadline. So I know some people were, um, were just uh, checking. Let me see. Yep, I see you right here. Great. Okay, all right. Thank you. That's lovely. Great, thank you so much. Right. Um, Asan, go ahead. Uh, hi, Lori. I just want to bother you about that same question. Um, I didn't realize, so when I initially applied, 
I did see that there was like um, a page that was that acted as like a confirmation email. There wasn't a separate email. So I kind of panicked and I applied twice. I hope that wasn't like too much of a trouble, you know, like, cause I know it's probably like annoying for the same person to apply over. No, it's, it's no problem at all. Don't worry about it. You're sweet to think of that, but um, I'm sorry. I know it's a lot of questions. I'm sorry you had to fill it out twice, but you're, no, you're fine. I didn't mind because I, I was under the impression that it didn't go through. It wasn't until the second time I did see the page that said you will not receive a separate email. So uh, would, would there be a way to confirm that you got either or maybe? Yes, I, I'm looking at it right now. I got them both. All right. <laughs> thank you so much. And yes, thank you, guys, for your help. Enjoy your night. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks Great. for time. Any other questions? All right, I will close it down. Thank you all so much. Feel free to email myself or Mary Alice with any questions. Oh, okay. Uh, sorry, I'm just seeing the questions in the chat now. Yes, uh, Kenny, I will check. Paul, when will next application be available? Sure, great question. Um, I can also check that. I should know off the top of my head. I think, uh, let, me just, let me just double check one second. Um, Next round. Um, March. The application period will open in March for the next one, and the um, intro class will start in May. Um, and the um, the advanced classes will start in June. And let's see, Kenny, I was gonna check yours. Yeah, yeah, Kenny, we got you, you're good. Oh, you're local, cool, okay, great. Okay. Any, any final? Final questions? All right, we'll close it down. Thank you all so much. Have a great evening. Take care. Bye, everybody. Good luck.